what's up guys? My name is Ben Kirshner. I go to Kutztown University. I actually turned 21 today, which is pretty awesome. And my main instrument is the electric guitar. I also play acoustic guitar. And I also just learned, I'm learning how to play the drums. So I started playing guitar uh, about 12, 13 years ago, which puts me about at the age of around eight or nine. I'm not really too sure exactly when I started playing, but um, I just remember, I just it was just something that I wanted to pick up just because we had a guitar at the house already, and I was just, I don't know, I was just like, I want to play that, and my dad got me lessons, and I actually ended up meeting a super good guitar teacher through a guy that I met at Sam Ash randomly one day, so that was a really cool thing, but I just, I don't know, just kind of always have loved music, I learned everything by ear, I just absolutely love uh, just making music and doing stuff like that, so yeah. So I've performed at countless events. I've been on stage uh, an nth number of times. I don't even know how many times I've been on stage, but I do a lot of stuff through um, churches and stuff. So in high school, I was actually part of two different worship teams. And I really love that. It gave me a lot of experience. I learned a lot of stuff through all of that. And now that I'm at college, I've been uh, kind of broadening out a little bit, but I do also play on two worship teams here as well um, for the Kutztown Christian Fellowship. And then also at my home church, there's a worship team that I like to play on as well. Yeah, uh, so what inspires my my writing? At the moment, it's got to be movements just because I've had a lot of their stuff lately in my head and I just really enjoy uh, the, the lyrics. I can really relate to the lyrics and also just the instrumentation is amazing. The drummer is stunning. I can't even do the stuff that he does. But the electric guitarist is really good. All of the voices he uses on his guitars, all the pedals, how he does all of that stuff is just so amazing. So I just like to learn on my own and just kind of, I listen to other guitarists that really, uh, I don't know, just kind of give me like a broader style and just kind of let me move into different genres and stuff. And there's also another artist, his name is David Gilmore. He's the lead guitarist of Pink Floyd. And he is just absolutely amazing. I would love to be half the guitarist that he is. So the reason that I love Pink Floyd is just because of how unique their style was for the time period. They were using uh, extremely innovative instruments for their time period. They're using like synthesizers, all kinds of different guitar pedals. For one song in Echoes, there's like this, um, this sound that David Gilmore makes and he actually like soldered up and wired his own pedal for it, which is like, you know, like over my head. So I just think that's really cool just to see like what guys used to do. Uh, like all the traditionalist players that just like to use standard pedals and stuff and how they rewire them themselves. So that's just a really cool thing to me. I like to see like what other artists do. So the type of music that I like to play, um, at the moment it has been the story so far and movements, just because of how intricate their guitar stuff is, and it kind of challenges me a little bit, so I really enjoy that. But as far as listening, I can really listen to any type of music. But my favorite band of all time has got to be Pink Floyd, for sure. There's not a better band. You can debate me all you want on that, but you're not changing my mind, so yeah. I actually am working on current music. I'm actually working on making an album right now. I'm about a year and a half into it. And as far as lyrics go, I'm not really too sure how that's gonna go yet. I just kind of wanted to kind of base it off of like previous events in my life. I've been, uh, I actually have the album title already, but I can't say that. <laughs> but yeah, it's gonna be kind of based off of previous events from my life. Hello there. My name is Richard Provolone, and tonight, on Improbable Coincidences, we'll be going over a famous star's death, a crew that tried to save them, and a runaway cameraman. All this and more, tonight. When did that get there? The producer came in, said it's just a straight walkway. Where was this? How come I didn't see this? Why are we shooting at night? No, no, no. We went over this, we went over this how many times, and when I... It's stressful, all right? It's okay. You know. Episode one, we wanted this to be right. We got a lot more takes to go. All right, all right. We definitely will not use this tape. That sounded snide to me. Ben? Great cameraman. 
excellent person, but you know, I'm a little torn. Because you know, Jared, we try to help him out. He's a great guy, always been my friend. We try to help him out here. He ends up choking, dying, and he doesn't do anything. He just goes down and reaches in and steals his wallet. But you know, it's okay. He came back later, got us all drunk. But then, you know, something peculiar happened. He stole our wallets. That monster, that's just absolute beast. Not only did he just sit there and watch Jared die, he just took his wallet. And my car, he took my car. My wallet was missing, everyone's wallet was missing. But you know what's funny? Aaron's car disappeared. I think he stole it. He took my beautiful ride. That, it was everything to me. So I thought it was a little strange, but I, I didn't think too much about it at that point. Yeah, like, Jared, cool guy, best guy around. He taught me the importance of tipping, how to change your oil, summoning the Dark Lord. Yeah, I like crashed in his tub. He would always shake me down for my bountiful eggs, but I was homeless at the time, so I, I can't really complain. Uh, yeah, uh, we were real close. He was truly ahead of his time. Uh, it really tears me up inside that we never found the guy that did him in. Were you not listening? We found him a week ago. Listen, man. He was into some dark stuff. I don't know what's going to happen next, but I heard it was some religious culty. Religious organization. Uh, yeah, we, we respected them. They, they invited us to do this soul rejuvenation that... They mentioned it, it was kind of like a funeral, but there, there was just a little bit of praising to the Dark Lord. But sadly, this organization treats me like a relic. They didn't go to the limits that Jared did. I mean, I lost a lot of eggs. Oh, oh, how can I forget? Always salting your pasta. Man, he was such a great guy, he always helped me out. So I thought, you know, we'd help him with this. But why do you lay eggs? Well, I really wanted my student loans forgiven, so I had my soul traded to have zero debt, except for the part where I now have the unholy ability to lay eggs. All right, so I am here in the lair of the cultists. Now, they have sworn an oath of secrecy, so we're not allowed to show their faces, but uh, let's uh, see if we can get a closer look. Devil your eyes, devil your eyes, devil your eyes, we pray for you, devil your eyes. Brothers, take your eggs of fertility. With these eggs, we shall show fertility of this mortal body. So, uh, as we see here, they are using eggs now. Eggs are traditionally a sign of fertility. Now, uh, let's get a closer look. We sprinkle these peppers for the fiery birth of men. Ah, ah, we see here they're adding some spice to the sacrifice uh, to sort of zest it up. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What we're seeing now is absolutely indescribable. It's, I have n never seen anything like that in my life. Is that is that a new color? Unbelievable, unbelievable. That is just flat out magical. Uh, let's see if I can get an... Let's see if I can get an interview with them. No, I, but I want to. I want to get through. Fine, 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 fine. I'm going. Unbelievable. They, I have a connection to this realm and the other, and and they don't want to talk to me. This is absurd. Well, all right, all right, all right. This. This has been the first episode of Improbable Coincidences. I'm Richard Provolone. See you next week. I'm going! God! Welcome back to KU Hacks. Today we're going to be making some easy beverages that you can whip up in your dorm room. An orange tea base and a cold brew iced coffee. 
first thing you're going to want to do is wash your oranges and you're going to need about at least one or two oranges per cup of water per the final tea base and of course you're going to peel them we're not going to need the fruit for this recipe so feel free to eat it or save it in the refrigerator for later just don't waste it and reserve the peels in a bowl for later Into boiling water now, you're going to drop those peels. At which point, you're going to immediately set the heat down to low for a simmer. And then you're going to want to just give that a nice little stir every now and then, of course, to make sure the peel doesn't burn. You'll want to let this simmer for 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the intensity of your brew. And then you just pour it off into a pitcher. Now you could drink this straight with sweeteners and spices, but today we're going to be using some tea with it. Now while it's still hot, we're going to place the tea bag in a cup and then pour our orange liquid right on top. Just steeping it like a normal tea bag with normal water, but this time we're using a orange water. Especially with a green tea, this can make a very, very refreshing beverage. Next up, we're going to be making our cold brew. Now, I have a cold brew maker here, but it's basically just a large French press, so you can use a normal French press. And to it, you're going to want to add 3 fourths cup coffee to 4 cups of water. Unfortunately, in my apartment, we don't own anything that can hold 4 cups in a measurable state, so I did have to split the water between two measuring cups, as you can see. But once all of that's in there, you're going to go ahead and grab your spoon and give it a nice stir. You want to moisten all the coffee grounds inside the French press. And after that, all that's left to do is wait. You're going to want to set this in the refrigerator for anywhere from 10 to 12 hours, depending on how intense you like your coffee. 12 hours later, we have here our finished cold brew. Now, there's still a bunch of coffee grounds floating all in there, which is why I have this second attachment, which, much like a French press, we're gonna use to force all the coffee grounds right down to the bottom. It has a mesh plunger, so we're gonna give that a nice plunge. And that's it. You have completely finished cold brew. Only thing left to do now is get a cup and get to drinking. Cold brew's delicious straight, but Personally, I like to add a splash of chocolate milk to give it not only sweetness, but that chocolatey flavor. Cold brew coffee is really one of those things that makes you realize, wow, they really overcharge for this stuff. It's easy as heck to make it yourself. And now you know. Mmm, delicious. As always, thank you for watching KU Hacks. We love having you here. Tune in next week where we're going to be making a beef stew in a crock pot, a nice and easy recipe that anybody can make at home.
I'm Betty Lou McBride. Um, my husband and I are the owners of the old jail museum. The history of the jail, it was built in 1871 at a cost of $125,000. The architect was Edward Haviland, whose father was John Haviland, who was the architect for the Eastern State Penitentiary. Um, it was used, as I said, until 1995, when we took over with, and the prisoners were then moved to the new jail. The Molly Maguires were the coal miners in the 1800s who came from Ireland, found conditions very difficult there, came here, got jobs in the mines, found conditions absolutely horrible and depressing in the mines. And when they revolted and went against the coal company owners and said, we need help, they were turned down. The coal company said no. With this fighting started, the men known as the Molly Maguires were the coal miners who who tried to make things better in the coal mines, in both the working conditions and in their pay. Eventually, there were seven of them hanged right here in the old jail. And one of them was being Thomas Fisher, whose handprint is on the wall. Most people think it's, Tom, it's Alexander Campbell's because all the things on the website say it's Campbell's. People ask often if there are ghosts here in the building. Um, I have had numerous reports of spirits and strange experiences here, but they are here. Are they the Molly Maguires? We're not sure. Uh, no ghost has jumped out and said, hi, I'm Alexander Campbell or I'm Thomas Fisher. But they have appeared to people. Um, I have seen things when I'm the only one here. My husband has seen things when he's the only one here. We have experienced things. Mostly it's the public that feels things when they come here, but we cannot say who the spirits are. The impact that the jail has on the community is a lot of people walking up the street. Um, right now, the jail attracts a large number of people all the times that we're open, and um, I'm sure that they stop in the businesses as they pass by, they get a view of the businesses as they pass by. So it does have that impact on the community. Um, it also shows that Jim Thorpe, at the, at the time of the Industrial Revolution, was a very important place. This was the city. Jim Thorpe was the city. People came from the small towns to the city of Jim Thorpe. The old jail preservation is, his, is important not only to the people of Jim Thorpe, but to all of history. It's an outstanding example of prison architecture of the time. It shows you the, what a building looked like at that time and how jails were, but it also gives you the story of the men known as the Molly Maguires, which is a story of men who suffered, who worked enslaved, and because of what they did, we have the lifestyle that we have today. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. To listen to Two New Cinema Club. May I have the envelope, please? And the Oscar for Best Picture is presented to. And the Oscar goes 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 to. And the Oscar goes. And the Oscar goes. And the Oscar goes. Hello, and everybody, you're listening to the Radio Voice Kutztown University of KUR. This is Two Dudes Cinema Club. My name is Nicholas Zierfoss, host. Also with me is Brian Kessick, host. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for joining us. If you, I mean, you obviously just heard what's going on. This is the Oscar week. This is Oscar talkie day. Okay. Oscar talkie. Yep. Oscars were Sunday. Awards were given out. Gift bags of over $700,000 were given out. 
That's really? not the real price. That's, that's not the real price. Okay. The gift bags were handed out, though. They were expensive. Do you want to know what was in them? A what? For acting and directing Academy Award nominees, will bring home $215,000 in swag. This year's Oscar bags will be filled with, among other things, a gift certificate for a $78,000 12-day cruise, a year's membership to a dating service, up to $25,000 in cosmetic procedures, and then on the lower end, some cannabis chocolate edibles. <laughs> So me and Nick did these Oscar ballots brought to you by Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, I don't um, have my phone. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, wait, if you want, you can just leave quickly, get your phone while yeah, I'm explaining yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you explain the game. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, we did the 2020 Oscars ballot that Rotten Tomatoes gave out. It basically put out every single nominee for every category plus the Rotten Tomatoes and user ratings next to them. And basically everyone got to guess what would win and you get to uh, put up your score. We posted this on our official Instagram account, at 2 Dude Cinema, and he's waving at me from the other end. And uh, me and Nick decided how many of these we're gonna get right, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go category to get category, talking about what we thought about that moment in the award ceremony itself, but also talk about what we thought was yeah. gonna win, as opposed to what actually won. Okay, visual effects. So we got Avengers Endgame, The Irishman, The Lion King, 1917, and Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Mm -hmm. Which do you, did you think was going to win? I thought Avengers Endgame was going to win because mm -hmm. it was the most VFX heavy. The real winner was... 1917! Guillaume Rocheron, Greg Butler, and Dominic Tui. So next up is actor in a supporting role. What did I you guessed vote correctly. For? What did you vote for? Uh, wait, did you guess correctly? No, I didn't. I, I, oh, well, then you go first. Yeah, I just did... I did uh, J -J Joe Pesci from the Irishman. Joe to be honest, that was the two I was hoping for. It was either Joe yeah. Pesci or the other one. And Joe Pesci had an amazing performance in The Irishman. Yeah. That was like my favorite performance of his since either My Cousin Vinny or Goodfellas. Yeah. But anyway, who won was Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. Actress in a supporting role is the next category up. And I voted for... Did you get this one right? No. Okay, you go then. Okay, Florence Pugh and Little Women. Florence Pugh should have been nominated for Midsummer. She should have been nominated for Midsummer, and I can't believe she didn't. So, if she was going to get nominated for Best Supporting Actress, I was going to vote for her. <laughs> okay, I did Laura Dern for Marriage Story, and that was correct. And the Oscar goes to Laura Dern, Marriage Story. We can do actor in a leading role now. Okay, so I, I'm, I, I'm assuming we voted correctly yeah yeah it was joaquin um, phoenix, so joaquin phoenix from the joker you know leonardo dicaprio from once upon a time in hollywood antonio banderas from pain and glory adam driver from marriage story and jonathan price from the two popes um let's, i think let's it was, be honest the reason why joker is as amazing as it is is because of joaquin Absolutely. phoenix and he actually puts in like the performance of like a lifetime like that's actually like People wish they acted as good as he did. I wish we had the time to go into detail, but uh, uh, it, it speaks for itself. If you saw the movie, you saw why he was so good at what he did. Yeah. Um, and and uh, that speech, that acceptance speech. Oh, my. When he talked oh. about River, oh, I, I was ready to cry. I saw that he was ready to cry, and I wanted to cry with man. him. Man, oh, what a beautiful man. I just I want to... Um, when you... When... When, when he was when he was when he was 17, my brother wrote this lyric. He said, "Run to the rescue with love, and peace will follow." Thank you. Uh, so, best picture is the final category and the most prestigious category, obviously, of the Oscars. So, what we had was Ford versus Ferrari, The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Women, Marriage Story, 1917, and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Parasite. The movie that won was the movie that deserved to win. Anyway, okay. yeah. we, we Did we get this right both? Yes, yes. Okay. It's Parasite. And the Oscar goes to... Parasite. I am so happy for Bong Joon-ho. The first foreign guy. movie 
to ever win Best Picture at the Oscars. This is the 92nd Oscars. Yeah. And this is the first foreign language film to win Best Picture. I think it's so cool because it's going to open up a, a real route for more foreign films to be recognized in the future because there's so much talent across the I'm world. I'm so happy so much. for the producers, Bong Joon-ho, all, the whole cast for Parasite. I s- love that they got the recognition they deserved. The Academy should have done this a long time ago, though. Absolutely. This is still a problem that's still very preve- – uh, that, that still is around Hollywood. It, yeah. We need to be more open it's, to it's more It's hopefully film. going to set the pace for more progressiveness in the future, and I'm so excited to see it because I am absolutely down for more foreign films like that. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for joining us for our Oscar recap show today. Uh, my name is Nicholas Zierfoss, and with me – Brian Keswick. Uh, make sure you follow us, follow us on our social media with at – Two Dudes Cinema on Instagram and check us out on there for more updates and anything we do. Our in the next future. show won't be as fast. Trust us, we're talking Absolutely. about video game movies. <laughs> All right, you folks have a great night. Yeah.